before we proceed with SPC, no, um, I'll just make a few corrections uh, from the RSM uh, lecture. So, nakikita na ba yung screen? Um, ah, tama. So, yung last time, parang we were, ano no, um, debating kung, or parang medyo nagmamahal ako over why hindi, ano no, hindi nag uh, coincide yung slides na results with my um, with my ano no uh, findings so um, I found out na dito pala sa ano itong sa part na to yung first order uh, when I copy uh, I pasted this y hat yung predicted na y no na copy over ko pala yung formula from this one so hindi kasi naka dynamic formula yun dito no so yun yung naging issue kaya yung lumabas dito sa part na to itong y hat iba yung parang ss model niya kasi iba yung mag y predicted therefore no kinumpute yung uh, sum of squares uh, nagiba siya no so kaya iba yung result na nakuha ko dito pero i i've, I've since corrected it so you if you look at the materials uploaded materials dapat tama na yung yung parang results na makikita niyo doon. Okay? So uh yun yung first correction no. So um the slides are correct. So if I upload the slides um i, tama yung data na nandoon no. Uh the second correction is so um this just reiterates the ano no, parang importance of doing um dynamic formulas no. So, lalo na pag uh, when you intend to use the same uh di ba ang ginawa kasi natin is ano no what we did was parang kinopy paste lang natin tong yung first na first order na na ginawa natin etong may ANOVA 2 to the K tsaka ANOVA first order kinopy paste lang natin to lahat tapos parang pinaste lang natin yung new data and because we pasted the new data, we were hoping na parang maano siya, ma, kumbaga, ma-generate niya yung results agad-agad. No? Uh, but uh, dahil nga dito sa ano, yung y hat, hindi siya naka-dynamic na referencing, na uh, nagkaroon tayo ng konting problema. No? So, if you intend to do parang ano, no? if we were to do RSM, tapos you intend to copy-paste, hindi nyo siya um uulitin kumbaga um i highly recommend na dapat dynamic lahat ng mga formulas no so if ever hindi naka dynamic yung formula you could run into some problems no? okay so the next issue is yung sa ano no sa modules uh, i've talked to sir terence and yun nga, may may mali nga doon sa ano no sa pag pag compute ng ss uh, uh, yung yung ss ng pure error so the essence of the pure error um dun sa ano modules was computed by taking the residuals of the i don't know residuals of the center point runs so by residuals ang kinuha niya is yung y minus y bar no so parang dun sa module ang ginamit is uh sum of square nitong residual na to center point trans parang ganyan it it resulted in 1.17321 pero um it shouldn't be the y minus y bar no ang dapat ginamit is sum of square ng sum of square ng y minus y bar of the uh center point trans lang so hindi kasama yung yung ano no um ibang data so the issue with this y minus y bar is yung y bar kasi na to is ano no uh, the average of all the data so dapat ang ginawa is sum of square ng y minus y bar for the ano lang etong uh, center point runs so you, you can do y minus y bar or pwede rin ang gawin na lang yung same na ginawa natin uh, in this ano no itong part na to sa ANOVA 2 to the K 
So there are two ways to do it. Yung either kunin nyo na lang yung uh, var.s tapos multiply nyo by degrees of freedom to get the uh, SS pure or you can also do um, yung parang uh, sum of square uh, ng center point runs minus yung parang correction factor niya. So uh, if you can, you can do something like this. No? Sum of square nito minus sum grand total squared uh, divided by count. Oh. Total count ito. Count. This one. And Okay, so it should give you 0.172, the same 0.172 dito na. Okay. Tapos, uh, isa pang ano, no, difference sa module is that um, I've, I've recently looked into it. No? Iba pala yung data ng module. So if you look at the data na pinrovide niya sa yield dito sa part na to, yun sa um, ano na, no, um, sa second na parang experiment after the MSA run. So, ito kasi yung MSA run. Same data. Pero pagdating dito, iba pala yung data na, na ginamit ng module no, as opposed sa data na ginamit sa slides. So, kaya magkaiba din yung parang result dito. No? Okay? Pero in any case, um, um, parang i-update na lang yung modules uh, para mag-reflect yung changes. No? Para hindi kayo malito. Okay. So, yun lang yung correction for RSM. Uh, meron pa bang ano, um, comments or may questions ba kayo about RSM before we uh, proceed to SPC? Okay na. So, if wala, can uh, I get a feedback? A thumbs up or yes? Okay naman. Uh, thank you, Russell. Okay. So, if in case na malilito kayo, uh, I've provided this slides, no? itong RSM na slide. So, tingnan nyo na lang, tapos check nyo yung mga formula na ginamit, tapos para may idea kayo kung paano siya. Or... Okay. Tapos, uh, yung last natin ginawa nung ito, yung second order. So, again, uh, ang gagawin nyo is to... Um, is to get the partial derivative no uh, of f prime uh, with respect to uh yung first uh, x1 so with respect to x2 so if you want to get x1 you take the partial derivative with respect to x1 tapos you should be able to get uh, an equation tapos may makukuha din kayo equation for f of x2 tapos if you take the system of equations and actually pwede natin gawin ngayon no so, mar marunong pa ba kayong mag-partial derivatives? So, if I were to set this um, equation, tapos gagawin natin na the f prime with respect to x1 is equal to 0, then we have 0 is equal to, so, a constant at 0 plus uh, 0 0.955, tama, x1, tapos 0. Uh, this is treated as a constant no? kasi with respect to x1. So, ito magiging constant lang. So, this is 0. So, 0 kasi derivative of a constant is 0. Tapos, 1.38 times 2. Tama? Times x1. Parang ganyan. 2 times x1. Uh, minus... Um, this is uh, x2, no? And again, we treat it as a constant. So therefore, parang zero lang to. As dito, uh, this is uh, 0 0.25 x2. Tama? Kasi parang derivative, uh, we treat x2 as a constant. So parang 0 0.25 x2, uh, x1. And the derivative of um, a of of ax is just a, no? So, parang ganyan lang siya. Sana na susundan nyo pa, no? 
and we can do that for I don't know for x2 as well. So zero, I uh, know sorry, I'm at zero parin because that's a constant. So zero point zero point I don't know, uh, nine five five one. So this is a constant with this with respect to x2 no. So this is just a constant. Tapos zero point five one five x two. So ganyan siya. minus uh, this is just a constant kung with respect to x2 no so x1 squared is just a constant minus zero so ito tapos last is itong minus 1.001 times 2 times x1 tama kasi derivative ng x squared is equal to 2x uh, 2x Okay, so that's 2 times itong constant times x1. Ah, sorry, x2 na to. x2. Tapos, um, ano ba yung last term natin? Plus, ito naman. Since x, x2 naman yung, ano, ina, uh, x1 yung ginagawa natin constant dito kasi with respect to x2. So, magiging 0 0.25 x1 to. Okay, so, so naman. And we can do matrix ulit dito to solve it no so um if you do kunwari x1 and x2 so this is equal to kunin natin yung ano no uh, yung kumbaga coefficients na x1 and x2 so dito x1 coefficient is negative 1.38 times 2 tama x2 coefficient is 0 0.25 Dito naman, x2 coefficient, x1 coefficient is 0 0.25. x2 coefficient is negative, uh, negative 1.001 times 2. Okay. Is equal to, may add lang natin yung mga constants. No? So, uh, the constant is, 0.995 so negative 0 0.995 tama tapos yung constant dito is na uh, negative 0 0.515 tama no so kumbaga this is x1 plus uh, parang a constant x1 uh, plus constant x2 is equal to constant so a x1 plus B x1 is equal to C. Tapos ito yung C. Okay? Tama ba? So, if we transpose that to the left-hand side. No? Okay? So, you have something like that. And if you want to get x1, x2, you can do equals inverse muna nito. So, actually, pwede natin i-diretso lang class. No? So, we can do m mult ng m inverse because we are multiplying the inverse of this equation with this array. Tama? So Excel actually allows you to do this. No? So if you do that, then you get this uh, two values, 0 0.3882 and uh, so this is your x1 and this is your x2. Okay. So, yung optimum settings niya is located somewhere around 0 0.3882 and 0 0.3052. And again, this is, um, ano pa no? This is your, um, what you call as uh, coded settings pa lang to. So, you need to convert it to natural settings. And you remember kung paano mag-compute natural settings, uh, you'll do 0 0.3882, multiply natin by high point minus center point which in this case is yung high point natin is uh, for time it's 80 90 tama so it's 90 minus 85 so that's 90 minus 85 plus 85 so that's the yung for time uh, you do um ito naman sa x2 is equal to times um the high point for the natural settings of your temperature is uh 175 tama 
Ah, no, sorry, 180. It's 180 minus 175. That's your center point plus the center point. So you get 176. So ito yung optimized settings na. Okay. And let me check no? if does that make sense. It may make sense naman siguro. 0.388. Kasi yung data natin, if you review the data, you can see na tumataas siya. 79, 78. Tapos sa star point, 1.414. Hmm. Uh, that makes sense. No? I think this makes sense. Uh, negative. Okay. So, yeah. so these are now the X1 and X2 in their natural settings. That's the coded settings. So this is for time. This is temperature. Okay, so pwede nyo siyang i-solve ng ganyan. No? Uh, if you do optimization uh, using yung second order na nakuha natin. Okay, so that's all for RSM. Now we can proceed with SPC. No? And SPC is fairly simple lang. You just need to calculate uh, different points. Tapos from those points, uh, i-ano natin. Pwede, pwede na tayong mag uh, generate ng certain graphs and using certain rules, pwede natin masabi kung out of control or in control ng system. No? Okay? So, um, just an overview. No? And uh, I hope you've already read the modules in advance. Pero control charts are usually done because uh, we want to um, detect if a system is out of control before uh before uh, nagkakaroon pa tayo ng ano no ng problema kung mga prevention me measure siya so you you can have a process for example uh, ang process niyo is dapat yung kinecreate na na na, na products niya is let's just say uh, meron siyang ano no um, thickness na or parang rolling process to wherein nagpo-produce kayo ng sheets of uh, thickness of, of a constant thickness. So for example, nag-produce kayo ng a thickness of 10 millimeters, kunwari yung sheets na pinoproduce. Pero syempre, dahil sa variances, you, you, there will be uh, a certain tolerance. No? So kunwari 10 millimeters, that could be 10 millimeters plus minus, let's just say 2 millimeters. No? So 10 plus minus 2. So you can say na kung 10 plus minus 2 siya, you can say na parang in control yung system nyo when you are within that range no doon sa parang specification na yun. so 10 plus minus 2 pero um once na lumabas na kayo sa 10 plus minus 2 you can you will say na out of control ng system nyo kung magalagpas na kayo sa specifications pero um there are multiple um aside from being outside of those uh, of that bounds no yung 10 plus minus 2 Pwede ring may certain trends that can indicate na out of control na yung system mo without actually um without actually ano no yung without actually producing products that are outside of the tolerance so pos possibly na kunwari um you have multiple sunod-sunod na runs na parang uh 11 or, or sunod-sunod na runs na parang 12 millimeters na yung pinaproduce na. So it's within 10 plus minus 2 pero parang nasa high side na siya. So that could be an indicator na out of control yung system nyo. Okay? So there are multiple parang rules. no So depending on, on the company, may certain rules kang pwedeng i-follow. Pero ito yung, yung ipapakita ko ngayon, ito yung mga general rules lang no, na ginagamit. Uh, for control charts so some companies can have their own specific na na parang rules in in terms of uh, determining kung control in control or out of control yung isang uh, process <coughs> okay so it could change from company to company so 
first, uh, itong control charts, uh, in this uh, course, we'll be only dealing with uh, three types, no? Yung X bar R chart, then we have your X bar S chart, tsaka yung last is yung XMR chart. Okay? Ito yung three na titingnan natin. Pero, again, in other companies, pwede rin uh, meron pa silang other na charts, no? Na ginagamit. Okay? So, X bar R chart just means that you are taking uh, the X bar, which is your arithmetic mean, tsaka yung range. Okay? So, R is the range. And we'd ha we'll have two charts on a sheet. One will track the sample mean. Tapos yung isa magta-track siya na sample range. So, the number of observations uh, usually is 2 to 15, no? And must be the same for all of the samples. Uh, K. Okay. okay? So, as an X bar R chart, can look something like this, no? Wherein meron tayong, um, ito yung mga different measurements. So, this is the replicates. Tapos yung, um, ano natin, kumbaga observations is itong, it is done by date, no? Okay? So, in, in this case, you have, uh, itong subgroups mo, ito, ito yung sample natin. Tapos ito yung observation natin, itong measurement. So it is subgroup by columns. Tapos each uh, measurement or replicates is uh, by by rows. No? So it doesn't have to be this way. No? Pwede naman baliktad. Kung baga, pwede rin yung mga, yung dates mo is by rows. Tapos yung measurement is by columns. It, it wouldn't really matter. No? Pero... Uh, just make sure na hindi kayo malilito pag uh, nag ano kayo nag compute kayo ng average and the ranges no okay so etong ito this is done by dates no so but it doesn't necessarily have to be done etong sample data natin is done by date so for example uh, it's a daily na x bar r chart so if um some companies uh do daily x bar r charts no i think kunwari si NXP, yung yung pinagtrabawan dati ni Doc Mena uh, is they do daily ano no, x bar art charts. Pero kunwari yung old company ko, yung Motolite, uh, we do hourly na x bar art charts. No? So kung makikita nyo dito, hindi siya per day kundi per hour siya. Hindi, hindi pala per uh, hour, it's more of per 3 hours. So, kumbaga, parang it's one-fourth of a, oh, sorry, per four hours pala. So, it's one-half of a shift, no? Yun yung data na meron kami. So, it all depends on the company, no? So, uh, sa amin, it's, uh, uh, no, sorry, si NXP ata is per shift siya instead of per day. So, it, it depends on the company, no? So, we can have uh, daily x bar R charts. We can have per shift x bar R charts. You can have hourly x bar R charts, no? Depending on the, the type of control na na meron kayo. Okay? So, ito, uh, ang gagawin natin is, uh, we'll just take, ano no, kunin natin si, yung data na to, and I have prepared, meron ako prepared data dito na. Cell. I can just look for it as now. Okay. Okay. Ito. Nakikita nyo na yung screen. 
uh, this is the same data as this one oh. itong sa pinakita ko dito sa Excel and let's just double check na no? kung same ba siya so this is uh, 15.3 14.9 and 15 and if you look at Excel 15.3 14 and 15 okay so it's correct okay <laughs> so nasa Excel ako ngayon so yung first na kukunin natin is just uh, the average no so let's do x bar so to get the average we just do average of this uh, data now remove pa lang yung formatting uh, So, this is my X bar. Kunin ko lang yung X bar ng um, individual na kumbaga date, uh, individual samples which is just the subset of the uh, or the subgroupings na ginawa ko. No? So, that's X bar dito. So, again, replicates is uh, per done per day. Okay? So, this is my uh, first na X bar. Tapos, next is yung kunin naman natin yung uh, yung range no so this x bar this we get range and let's let's just say r no so r is just the range and to get the range if you remember descriptive stat natin it's just the maximum minus the the minimum no so we can do max minus uh, min kasi uh, i think wala pang ano no excel function for range no at least as far as I know, wala pang Excel function for range. So, uh, what I'll do is just max minus min. So, I'll do that. So, at 1.5, then I can also, oh, sorry. I can also drag this to the right now. So, I get something like this. So, that's X bar R. Tapos, uh, ang gagawin natin is, we can plot this X bar R now. So, what we do is, um, kailangan natin naka, nakita niya. So, I'll do insert. Tapos, dito sa charts, you can insert uh, ito, no? So, if you see this uh, parang button here, this is actually a uh, scatter plot. So, kailangan natin is a scatter plot, no? And what we'll do is, let's do scatter plots uh, with straight lines and markers, no? Okay. Tapos, you, you, wala akong sinelect na data muna para mas, ma, mas madali natin maano, no? ma kumbaga ma pinpoint yung data natin so ito yung chart natin so what we do is we right click tapos we select data tapos um dito sa bottom uh dito sa left hand side may add button so we add and we can add a name no so let's just say x bar tapos uh we select the the x series so, ito X series, um, since we are doing daily, we select this one. No? Ito. So, this is now the, <clears throat> kumbaga, yung, hindi oh, yan na-check yata. Okay lang. <clears throat> Tapos, yung Y values natin is this one. X bar. So, you get something like this, no? <clears throat> and you can see na ito yung mga Feb 1. And this is Feb 1, Feb 2, Feb 3, Feb 4, Feb 5. So on and so on. Hanggang Feb 9, which is this one. Okay. And you press OK. And ito na yung data natin. So we can do um we can do separate charts, no? So again, meron tayong separate charts for X bar R and X bar 1. Or kung gusto nyo, pwede ring naka, um, nakasama yung two, ano no? yung two charts pero i always find na pag sinama mo yung two charts um medyo nakakalito siya no kasi mga hindi enough yung space most of the time hindi enough yung space <clears throat> tapos kailan niyo pang i-adjust yung axis niyo uh, just to make it look good no so um ginagawa ko i always just separate x bars and the x bar chart and the r chart no okay so ito this is your x bar r x bar chart and let's create a, 
uh, the R chart. And ang pwede natin gawin is control C, then control V. Oh, sorry. Uh, we do control C, tapos select dito tayo. And control V. So, mabaga, kinopy-paste lang natin yung um, X bar chart. But this time, we, what we can do is, if we select the, the, the X bar R chart, pwede actually natin i-move lang tong, ano no, tong array na to. So, we have the same X values, which is this one, in dates. Tapos yung Y value, i-move lang natin downwards. And automatic mag adjust na rin siya. Okay? So now, this is now an R chart. No? And kung gusto nyo na i-ano siya, um, lagyan din ng label, pwede rin select data, edit the data, tapos label nyo lang as R no R. You can do a range. Okay? Para lang may data siya dito. or may ano siya, title, chart title, kumbaga. So, meron tayong X bar, meron tayong R. So, um, we, we've done the first part, no? So, ito et, yung uh, creating the charts themselves. So, um, it, again, pwede siyang, this is done, um, in, in this particular case, this is done weekly, no? So, uh, and this is a moving, kumbaga, yung X bar R chart is a moving chart, no? So, every new data na napoproduce nyo, you will, add new uh, data points. So, kumbaga, kung nag-Feb 10 na, uh, dadagdagan nyo ng, one, ng point ulit, tapos Feb 11, dagdagan ng new point, Feb 12, etc., etc. So, nag-move siya. Kumbaga, you are looking at your process kung in control pa ba siya or out of control na. Um, and in this case, on a daily basis. So, you assess uh, the level of control na meron sa process na yung on, the, on a daily basis, no? Pero sa amin kasi, um, yung dun sa Motolite kasi dati, it, masyadong malaki yung time delay pag per day namin siya ginawa. Kaya ang ginagawa namin per 4 hours para if at the, uh, at a, uh, kunwari at a certain time na detect na namin na out of control na siya, yung readjustments na gagawin namin to make it in control, um, will have a only a four hour delay kumbaga. Kumbaga it will happen only in a four hour span. So unlike dito kunwari ang ginawa dito is uh, on a daily basis no. So um ang mangyayari dito is kumbaga kung out of control na yung isang process mo para one day pa bago ma-correct mo yung yung uh, uh, pag out of control na yun. Okay? So yun yung advantage ng mas ano yung mas um mas regular na data points no ang ang problema lang is kung mag regular kayo nagche-check then that this involves uh, regular testing and may involve higher uh, cost no parang for for the data analysis so higher re uh, number of resources yung kailangan niyo para ma-generate yung data so some companies uh, do daily kasi hindi naman as sensitive yung process nila uh, pero in in our company is so much like that eh kumbaga kung out of specs na kasi yung ano it could have um, severe um, effects on the performance of the batteries no and it is could cost you parang millions in millions of pesos kasi irerecall mo yung um, yung yung batteries na na produce on that day kailangan yung irerecall no kasi it wouldn't perform as 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 good as it it can because of the ano no out of specs na na parang concentrations. Um, usually, ang sinecheck namin dito is yung, ano no, yung in SPC namin dito is yung parang level of mga micro-alloying elements like tin and um, calcium. Okay? So, um, usually, itong, S, uh, itong SPC pala class, no, pag, uh, lalo na pag ISO certified yung company na pagtatrabawan nyo in the future, no, if you will work as uh, process engineers, for ISO 9001 certified companies, usually they will have some level of uh, parang statistical process control. No? Or if not, um, pwede kayo actually yung mag, mag introduce ng SPC no? to make the process more ano, no? reliable. Kumbaga. Okay? So, ang, ang goal ng SPC is um, is more prevention siya rather than cure. No? So, you want to de detect yung slightest hints lang na nag nag uh, out of control na yung process niyo. Okay? So, 
Um, we're done with the charts, no? Again, it's a moving chart. It's updated. Uh, it's updated. Um, per on a periodic basis, and in this case, it's updated daily. So, um, but this alone is not enough for us to be able to to tell if whether in control or out of control in some process, no? Because if you look at it, parang data points lang siya. Okay, so we need uh, certain rules, no? So, um. For that, we have uh, this, ano, no? Mag-set tayo ng uh, two control limits, no? So, we have a uh, upper control limit and we have a lower control limit. And the control limit, uh, they, they are just represent the limits of variation that should be expected from a process in a state of statistical control, no? So, kumbaga, ito yung parang acceptable sa atin. So, if it is within the control limits, parang masasabi natin na um, parang... Uh, kumbaga, this is known variation that we know na doon nag, doon lang naglalaro yung values na yun. So um it depends on company to company no. For example, our in, in Motolite dati, yung control limits are based on specs no. So kunwari um um for a battery to perform in its peak condition, dapat yung tin concentration na and I forgot the numbers no, pero let's just say Kunwari lang, it should be around 1.1% to 1.5%. Parang ganun. Yun yung specifications namin. So we use the specifications as the control limits. So you can do that. No? You can do control limits uh, based on specification. Pwede rin, instead of um, based on specification, yung control limits nyo, uh, pwede rin, ang gawin nyo is you use uh, this equation. No? So this is... Um, how you this is based on i don't know on on parang on standard deviations so kumbaga you are assuming na your process is um is a statistically normal process therefore dapat nagfo-follow siya ng parang uh, gaussian distribution no? so this is the uh, based on that uh, notion no? so uh, the way you calculate it is you uh, take your x bar bar so x bar bar is just the um, average of the averages no so if you look at the if you if we go back to excel no so, so dito sa excel we have your x bars no which is uh, on a daily basis that was if you take the overall average nito then you get um the uh, x bar bar okay so uh balik tayo sa powerpoint So what we do is um kunin natin yung x bar bar uh, for the lower control limit na uh, minus tayo ng 3 times yung s bar which is just uh, the average standard deviations uh divided by uh, a constant a sub n and this this constant a sub n is uh given here no so ito siya so this is uh where uh, the constant varies based on the number of observation per uh, period na kinukuha nyo yung ano um yung per, per period na kinukuha natin yung data points okay so kumbaga this is essentially just the number of replicates or number of measurements na ginagawa natin okay so kukunin natin yung constant na yun based on the number of replicates in the, in our case we use uh 5 no 5 replicates so a sub n should be 5 uh, Wait lang. Uh, let me double check this now. Whoops. para mali ata tong ano kas no itong table na to but anyway I'll, I'll show you the correct table na lang later on uh, 
Ah, okay. This is an on estimated parameters pa. Kaya pala nalito. So, we should use uh, this one. Okay. Nandito na yung, ano, yung correct formula. No? Okay. So, uh, to get the uh, lower control limit and the upper control limit, this is based on uh, parameters pala. Uh, so, kaya pala magkaiba yung ano natin, A sub N and uh, B sub N. Pero ang gagamitin natin is just this simple equation. No? So, we get X bar bar. Uh, to get the upper control limit, we just uh, add A2 uh, multiplied by the range. Tapos pag uh, LCL naman is just X bar bar minus A2 times the range. Where A2 here is now equal to, based on the number of samples, um, equal siya sa uh, a certain constant. No? So for example, in this case, we have five measurements, so five observations per uh, data point. So we use 0.577. Okay, so magiging uh, upper control limit natin dito is 0. 0.577 times yung range. Tapos LCL is yung uh, X bar bar minus 0. 0.577 times the average of the range. Okay, or the R bar. So gawin natin is, if we go back to Excel. So compute muna tayo ng uh, LCL, tapos UCL. So LCL is just equal to um, that's uh, X bar bar. So we just take the average of this one. And since we'll be dragging this, no? Pwede gawin natin is F4 na natin lahat. No? 4 minus F4 uh, tapos minus is a2, which is 0 0.55, no? Uh, a 5.77 ba yan? 0 0.577. We can double check ko na lang. Times the average of the range, no? And the range is just uh, average of th these values. And again, we do F4. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. F4. Okay. So we get this value. So we can drag this. And it's the same value, no? Kasi yung LCL naman natin is constant. It's a constant horizontal line. No? Okay. So that's LCL. Tapos UCL. I can just copy this, no? But instead of minus, gawin natin siya plus. Okay. And let me double check, no? So, ito class, this is just a table of constant. No? And I'll be providing this table of constants to you guys. So, this is for a, a SPC chart. So, nandito na lahat yung A2, A3, D2, D3, D4, B3, B4, and E2. So, all of this will be used sa mga uh, SP charts, SPC charts na gagamitin natin. Okay? So, um, tama ba point five? So, yung ganin, kanina, A2 times 5 at A2... Uh, nagagamitin natin is for a sample size of 5. So, that's 0.577. So, tama naman. Okay. So, 0.577. Okay. So, meron tayong uh, LCL and UCL natin. So, pwede natin i-add tong LCL and UCL. No? So, um, add natin siya. So, again, to add a date, uh, a new series, no? ang gagawin lang natin is select data ulit. Tapos, add tayo ng series. Tapos, uh, we can call this as UCL. Ano so? Oh, LCL muna. We can call this as LCL series. So, yung X natin is the same X, which is this one. Tapos, yung Y naman natin is itong LCL na to. Okay? So, you'll notice na may magpuproduce siya ng uh, horizontal line. Which makes sense, no? Because... Uh, isang constant uh, number lang yung ginawa natin. Okay? So, that's LCL. Add tayo ng isa pa. Let's add UCL naman. So, X natin again is the dates. Tapos, Y natin is itong UCL na to. Okay? 
So this is our uh, control limits. Okay. So just to make it a little bit cleaner, no? What we're going to in class is um, let's make it the same color no? so we can format data series. Tapos, gawin natin um, dito sa right-hand side. So, if you format data series, gawin lang natin siyang ano, no? one solid color lang. Let's do red. Tapos, uh, wag na natin siyang lagyan ng marker. no So, marker is just uh, yung mga bilog-bilog na yan. So, remove lang natin yung marker. So, none tayo. So, ito, we do the same. None to line. And let's just uh, do red lines. No? Para, eh, at least in, in my mind, parang it looks nicer. No? Para kita natin na ito yung data points natin. Tapos ito yung parang uh, control limits niya. So, we have the upper control and the lower control limit. Okay? So, um, another thing that we need for the SPC charts is uh, a central line. No? So, to get the central line. Uh, the central line is actually just the x bar bar no, in this particular case. So, siya lang yung magiging center dito. So, again, if if you're using for the companies na that uses yung um, control lines um, based on parang specifications, then yung, yung central line nila will be yung, kunwari yung example ko kanina, yung 10 millimeters plus minus 2 Ang central line nila will be the 10 millimeters. Tapos yung upper limit is plus 2, lower limit is minus 2. Okay? Pero for this case, ang gagawin natin is, um, which is also, which can also be done, no? yung for this particular case, ang ginamit kasi is based on the assumption na uh, normally distributed yung isang, um, yung isang process or it behaves normally. Therefore, it should follow the Gaussian distribution. So if that's the case, then it's a dynamic na formula. No? If you add new data, magbabago tong upper limit and lower limit. Kumbaga. Tama? Kasi uh, itong upper limit is based on um, is, is based on uh, on the X bar bar. Tapos yung lower limit is also based on X bar bar and range as well. No? So kung mag-add kayo yung new data, then magbabago yung X bar bar and magbabago din yung R bar nyo. Tama? Okay, so kumbaga, the, the more data that you add, the uh, kumbaga, you, you can actually make a dy dynamic na parang data, no? Na kumbaga, it can be, uh, or you can make a dynamic na parang Excel sheet wherein um, if you add new data, parang yung chart mo automatic magbabago siya, nag-update itself, no? You can do that. So, ito siya. Uh, we have now the control limits. Then, let's add the center line. No? So, uh, <coughs> the center line is just equal to yung... <coughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me, guys. It's just equal to the um, X bar bar. No? So, we if we take center line, let's add another one. No? Center line. So, the center line is equal to... I'm sorry. Um, just the average or the grand mean, kumbaga. So this is just the average of the average. So we have 15 points. And let's do F4 para pwede natin i-drag lang to now. Okay. So again, to add data, just select your chart. Select data. Tapos add tayo. Uh, let's call this as center. Uh, tapos, um, center line natin is, uh, this is the X values. Again, yung dates. Tapos yung Y value natin is ito. Okay. So, ito, <clears throat> let's make it such that um, right-click natin. Again, uh, we, oh no, sorry, right-click natin to Tapos, uh, format. Nasaan yun? Uh, format data series. Okay. Select natin yung data series natin, which is itong orange line. And uh, for this, let's just say na yung no markers ulit. Kasi Fico, pangit na may marker siya. No? Pero yung line natin, will make it uh, a black. Pero uh, dashed siya. Para ano. 
So I think it, it looks nicer now. So we have upper limits indicated by red lines. Tapos the center line is your ano no? Parang ano siya, um, uh, broken lines uh, at the center. Tapos yung data points mo is um, in blue. No? Okay? But uh, this is all preference. You, you can have your own. So you can be creative with this one. As long as you make it cons consistent. No? So pwede rin na uh, you have no formatting at all. So kung baga kung ano lang default na Excel, yun lang yung gamitin nyo. Uh, no problem din naman siya. Ako may medyo um, parang napapangitan lang ako pag uh, different colors. No? Yung, yung, sa, yung mga default na ginagamit Excel. So I like to um, parang make it consistent. No? Na red yung, yung control limits ko. At tapos broken line yung center line ko. Okay? But again, it's all up to preference lang naman. Okay, so we have uh, the two lines. Tapos ngayon we have the center line. Now we can proceed with analyzing kung paano yung ano, uh, paano yung paano natin ma-assess kung in control or out of control pa yung isang process. Okay? Um, uh, later, ipapakita ko yung control charts for R. No? Kasi you do this separately. So gagawin din natin yung uh, parang UCL and LCL for R charts. Although I think we, we can do it now na agad. No? Sige, let, let's do the X bar, uh, the control limits for the R charts. So, if your if your subgroup is less than 7, then wala tayong lower control limit. So, in, in, in our case, we have only 5 measurements. No? So, that's less than 7. So, wala tayong lower control. Meron lang tayong upper control limit. So the upper control limit is uh, equal just to D4 multiplied by the range. No? And this is the D4. No? So in this case, it's 2.114 times the uh, average of the range. So we can do, go back to Excel. So we do um, upper control limit and let's just say upper control limit ng range. No? So ito sabi natin, LCL of X. This is LCL of uh, UCL of X. So LC, UCL of R to for the range. So the upper control limit of the range is just equal to um, it's just equal to your uh, D4, which again is 2.114 for this case. So like that, that's a chart now. It's 2.114 because it's uh, we have five measurements. Thus, D4 is 2.114. Okay, and again, I'll provide these charts for you guys now. Okay, so that's 2.114 equals 2.114 times the average of the uh, R no or the R bar. Okay. And again, I think F4. Oh. F4 and F4 para ma fix siya. So I can just drag it to the right now. So this is UCL and LCL. Now, what we're going to do is, um, dito tayo mag add ng limit na. So we do right click, select data, we add a new data. We call this UCL. X is the same X, no? Ito. And for the Y, we use this UCL right here. Okay. Tapos, uh, I think we can do and pala pwede. So, again, I just like to make it consistent, no? I'm oh, sorry. Format. Format data series. Gawin ko lang siyang red with no markers. So I'll do red. This is a marker. We'll do none. Okay. So that's my <clears throat> that's my I don't know, uh, UCL. Okay. Tapos yung center line dito sa case na to will actually be just the uh, R, R, R bar, no? So that's center line. And going to lang center, no? Para 
center x to. Ito, this is center r. So, yung center line nito is just the average of your r bar. And let's again do f4, f4. Okay. So, if we drag this to the right, and we add another data series dito. So, that select data, add, let's do center, x value, same x values in dates. Y value is now this one. And again, I'll just format this. Format data series. Gawin ko siyang uh, no markers. Tapos gawin ko siyang black line. Pero dashed. Okay? Just for consistency. Okay? So this, in this time, meron akong, uh, upper, uh, meron akong control limits plus the, uh, plus the ano no, uh, center line. Okay? So, um, now that we have this, we can now turn to the different set of rules. No? So, and the rules. So his, here is how we interpret the, I don't know, the control charts. So we have uh, certain uh, zones. No? So we have zone A, zone B, and zone C. So this is just dividing our uh, kung baga, dinidivide lang natin yung um, yung upper half natin tsaka lower half of the control charts into three zones. Okay? So, you can imagine na uh, you, you'll just be adding uh, two horizontal lines dito. No? So, sa taas, two horizontal lines. Sa baba, add din kayo ng two horizontal lines which is just equal to um, yung upper control limit minus the center line times two-thirds. Ito. Tapos ito naman times one-third. Okay? So, um, madali na lang ito i-generate. So, uh, pakita ko na rin ito sa inyo. Okay? So, rule number one. Rule number one natin is whenever a single point falls outside of the um, control limits, automatic out of control na yung process nyo. Okay? Regardless of which control lines or control limits it is, no? So, kung waga kung tumaas siya dito or nasa labas siya dito, then automatic out of control na yung process natin. So, that is uh, uh, fairly straightforward. No? Parang intuitive din siya. Na kung lumabas ka sa control limits, meaning uh, parang out of control yung process mo, out of specs ka na, um, magkakaroon ng issues kung baga yung, yung products na napoproduce mo from that particular process. Okay? So, rule number two is whenever at least two out of three successive values fall on the same side of the center line and more than two sigma units away from the center line, that is saying na it is in zone A, then a lack of control is indicated. Okay? So note that the third point can be on either side of the center line. So if you look at this, you can see na um, lumagpas na tong ano no, parang et etong two points na to so this is uh, and and keyword dito is this should be successive values no so that's two out of three successive values so um, if you look at this this two is outside actually pwedeng ang hindi itong three yung kukunin mo pwedeng actually itong three na to kasi successive din naman sila pero the point being na two out of three is out is in zone a and and it is in zone A of the same side. No? So, hindi pwedeng, kunwari, itong point na to nandito, tapos yung isang point is ng zone A ng kabilang ng lower half. Hindi pwede. Dapat same side siya. Okay? So, that's uh, rule 2. So, ito, you can see, 2 out of 3 uh, successive points uh, nasa zone A. Okay? So, out of control na rin yung process. Pag ganyan. So, next is, when you have 4 out of 5, successive values that fall on the same side of the center line. So, ito. Same side meaning puro nasa taas siya. Same side sila. Uh, whether it's uh, in... Uh, but but it should be one unit away. Uh, so, either zone A or B. So, pwede siyang zone B or B yan. So, kung nandito siya, 4 out of 5 uh, on the same side tapos uh, in zone A or B. Uh, this is also out of control. Okay? So, regardless kung nasaan tong, uh yung fifth point. No? So, di ba, four out of five, yung one, one point 
na hindi nagpa-fall in either zone A or zone B. It could be in anywhere. No? So, pwede siyang nasa zone C or pwede siyang nasa uh, zone A ng lower half, zone C ng upper half. Doesn't matter. No? As long as 4 out of 5, again, successive values. No? So, uh, ito, 4 out of 5 successive values nasa zone A uh, or B. Kung baga zone B pataas. Um, on the same side. So, hindi pwedeng nandito siya sa baba. No? Then that, uh, kung baga, this is out of control um, in violation of rule number three. Okay? Then lastly, rule number four is whenever at least eight successive values fall on the same side, regardless of who, uh, what which zone it, it, it falls under, then automatic out of control na yung process mo. And ito yung pinaka-common actually, no? Itong, uh, in, in PBI, we actually use this uh, ano, no? itong um, rule na to, itong rule number four. Kung meron kang eight successive on the same side, it means na out of control na. So notice again, class, no? rule one is intuitive. Itong out of, out of limits. No? Kung out of limits ka siya, siya, ibig sabihin out of control talaga yung process mo. Pero itong rule two, three, and four, medyo ano sila, no? hindi naman ganun ka intuitive. So kumbaga, uh, feel mo yung products na produce nila should be kumbaga, should be usable still kasi within limits pa naman sila eh. should still be usable pero it just says na kumbaga, you should your process is about to fall out of specification yun yung yun yung kumbaga, yung yung um, yung parang lesson natin dito no so parang we we are looking at the trends tapos parang nasasabi natin ala parang kakaiba na yung movement ng data points natin na hindi na siya normal i think uh, we need to do readjustment because eventually we will have out of uh, specifications na product if we allow this trend to happen or allow this trend to uh, to run its course no parang ganun yung yung treatment natin no? of spc Again, it's a preventive measure. It's not a uh, corrective measure. No, para siyang, uh, it's a preventive measure. We we see trends that could likely cause uh, future failures. Therefore, iko correct natin as early as now. Rule one, obviously, meron ng failure. No, kasi waga nag out of limits na siya. Eh. So nag out of limits na siya. Therefore, automatic nag fail na yung yung process na yun. So kailangan na correct agad. Eto not as obvious. No, parang trends lang tiniting na natin. And based on trends, we know that um, magka out of control na to. Therefore, it should, uh, parang, it should prompt the process engineers to do something about it. No? So either readjust na siya, change the parameters, or whatever para uh, maging in control ulit yung process natin. Okay? So yun yung four rules. Again, other companies have... Uh, other additional rules, no? So, pwedeng, uh, they have additional rules to say na out of control yung isang process. And, uh, pero for this course, we'll be only dealing with these four na rules, no? Okay? So, let's apply it in our data set. Tingnan natin siya kung uh, meron bang na-violate na rules dito. So, The easiest way to do this class, no, is you can set up. Ah, uh, sorry, hindi pa ako naka ano. Uh, but uh, before I proceed, no, Martin asks if yung lumabas pong data is pasok sa more than one rule. Indicate po lahat ng rules. Yes, indicate mo lahat ng rules na no, kung ano yung uh, na break na, na rule. So kung baga, kung sa kung exam pa to, isasabi nyo which rules are specifically broken. No? Pero kung sa ano to, sa process no, uh, kung kung baga, kung actual process to, if nakita nyo na yung isang rule has been broken, automatic mag-adjust na kayo regardless if may nakita pa kayong uh, other rules that have been broken. No? Kung baga, real time kasi ang, ang ano nito. No? Yung SPC kasi is meant to be real time. So kung baga, once na if you add a new data point, so kung baga ito, kung, kung kunwari lang, in control to, no? so wala kayong gagawin. If you add a new data point, kunwari si Feb 10, tapos Feb 10 um, cost uh, a prompt or Feb, because of the Feb 10 data, nagkaroon ka ng 
uh, rule break. So whether it's rule 1, rule 2, rule 3, rule or rule 4, then automatic magche-change na kayo. Hindi na kayo maghihintay pa ng Feb 11, Feb 12 para magkaroon ng changes. no So immediately after pumasok yung new data mo, which is the Feb 11 data, you you can now prompt or kumbaga magpa-prompt na agad na out of control yung process. And therefore, uh, kailangan yung i-readjust na yung uh, parameters nyo. Okay? So ganun siya. It's meant to be real-time, itong si SPC. Okay, so we have um, itong SPC, no? So uh, the way, at least sa Motolite, no, the way they implement this is sa, dun sa, kumbaga, sa production floor, meron actually yung computer doon. Tapos yung computer doon, merong ano, no? Kumbaga may, uh, may keyboard, may mouse. Tapos yung mga technician, once na, na, na ano nila, um, ay yung mga field, uh, mga workers, yung mga um, ano natin mga skilled personnel ang ginagawa nila is nag-input sila ng data whenever they get data no so real time siya in-input yung data tapos may chart na nakalagay tapos itong chart na to naka-display to sa parang quality control room so naka-display siya tapos everyone can see it tapos um, meron din siyang automatic na mga ano no you, you can actually do this on your own then if you do mga if functions no if you do if functions pwede actually na mag-create kayo ng Actually, Excel lang din gamit namin noon eh. So, through if functions, automatic parang may magpa-prompt na parang in control out of or out of control yung isang process. So, once na nag-prompt na out of control siya, uh, titingnan ng mga quality control engineers. Um, we have a dedicated na para may statistician kami dati. Dedicated statistician na uh, that handles all the SPC, no. So, pag tiningnan niya, naka out of control niya, i-prompt na niya yung parang process owners no so kumbaga itatawagan niya through phone uh, sir nag uh, out of control na itong ganitong process kailangan niyo na mag readjust so yun uh, ganun siya inaano no uh, ina-apply in the real world okay so we have this uh, so the easiest way to implement yung yung zone A zone B and zone C is actually instead of diba actually we we can add ano no parang mga zone A, zone B markers. So, parang zone A, zone B, tapos zone C. Parang ganyan. Tapos add tayo ng mga horizontal lines para sa zone, uh, actually, two lines lang pala. Zone A, B, tapos zone uh, B, C. Tama? Parang interface lang kasi yung line. Tapos for the upper, tapos zone A, B, and B, C for the lower. Tapos magdadagdag pa tayo dito sa range, no? So, ano kasi, uh, pag ganun kasi yung ginawa natin, medyo uh, matrabaho, no? Uh, the easier way to do it actually is, we take um, advantage of the grid lines, no? So, ang gagawin natin is, ipo-format na lang natin tong grid lines na to such that um, magmamatch yung, ano, no? Yung parang... Yung, yung parang ano niya, uh, parang spacing with the zones na gusto natin to produce. Okay? So, I'll show it to you guys. So, if I do um, format taxes, ah, di ba kita? Wait. So, if I select this one, itong left axis natin, itong Y axis, right click siya, then you do format axis. You can actually set yung ano niya no parang uh, major units and minor units so ang gawin natin is set natin yung uh, minor units or yung major units as uh, ano no um kumbaga is set natin siya in such a way na we do one third of the distance from the ano no uh etong sa from the X bar natin, we do parang one-third distances away. Okay? So, the, how do we do that? So, we need to, ano muna, no? Pag-isipan muna natin kung ano yung magiging minimum and maximum niya. So, we want it to be, so, let, let's just take first kung ano yung actual distance between the, uh, UCL minus X bar. 
So it's 1.0869. No? So that's the distance. And if you divide it by 3, if you divide this by 3, it's 0.36233. No? So yun yung dapat ano natin. Um, parang major markings natin to make sure na uh, ano siya um, within the same kumaga yung mga zones natin yung spacings ng zones natin is exactly this number no so gawin natin right click minimum natin gawin natin siyang ano uh, equal sa lower control limit so in this case 14 0.3441 yung maximum natin gawin natin siya yung um, maximum which is 16.447 tapos yung major axis natin gawin natin 0.36233 okay and what it does is parang 36233 What it does is it creates a uh, no no parang may mga zones ka na, na automatically na create. So if you look at it you have your three zones, zone A, zone B, uh ah, zone tama, zone A, zone B and zone C. This is zone A, zone B and zone C. So may counting inaccuracies no kunwari itong center line hindi siya it should be 4.14.3441 pero may counting inaccuracy pero bakit ganun? Uh, did I nag round up pa ako? Baka nag, may nag round rounding somewhere na nangyari dito. No? 14.3441 hmm Hindi ko alam kung bakit med sobrang off niya. No? 15.36. Ah, sorry, sorry. Kaya pala. Kasi yung ginamit ko is mali, mali, mali pala yung ginamit ko. Dapat X bar, um, dapat yung average kasi hindi ko kinuha yung yung center line dapat. So, it should be this center line here. So, it should be tama ba? Center line minus Ah, sorry. This should be center line, upper limit minus the center line. Yeah, this should be 0.35047 pa lang ginamit ko. So, let's do that again. So, format axis. So, I should do 0.35047. Ah, so you'll notice na sakto na siya. No? Swak na siya. Kumbaga zone A. And if you want parang maximum na ano, no? Um, para maganda talaga. Pwede nyo actually select yung horizon, uh, yung vertical na values. No? Ito. Delete nyo siya. So you have something that looks like this. So ang ginawa ko lang is um, sinelect ko to. In-highlight ko tong parang vertical axis. Tapos I press delete. Automatic ito yung delete. Pag uh, ito yung sinelect ko, itong mga horizontal na axis. Tapos delete ko. Mabubura din siya. So ito yung gagawin ko. So notice how Um, hindi na tayo nagdagdag ng mga other horizontal lines no we just use the grids themselves to generate the ano so you, you can do this ang problema lang dito is that you have to do it per control charts na ginawa niyo no? so for example nagdagdag ng feb 10 na data then if you add the feb feb 10 data ang mangyayari is kailangan niyo i-produce or or kailangan niyo i-adjust ulit yung ano yung grid chart And I'm not sure if pwede siyang dynamic, no? Kaya ko bang i-equals ito? Hindi, hindi siya kaya. So, yun. Yun yung medyo, uh, sa ganitong method, um, medyo ano siya, no? Uh, mag it's faster, definitely faster, pero magpo-fall short siya in terms of yung parang dynamic um, referencing kasi hindi mo pwedeng ma-adjust siya um, on the fly, no? As, as you add new more, more, more points. So, 
So that's for uh, SPC. So let's try to ano no. So i-adjust ko din to. Um we'll do para sa ano no. Uh, this is uh yung I'll just say zones na x. Zones of R is equal to um this is uh UCL R minus center R over 3. Divided by 3. So, gawin natin siyang format axis. Change natin yung maximum niya. Let's do maximum natin should be um, the UCLR which is 3.8518. Tapos, we'll do zones... 0.67665 Okay. So yun, um you notice na naka zones, naka three zones namin siya. And what we'll do is delete natin tong horizontal axis no. Para meron tayong malinis na horizontal lines to indicate the zones. So, uh based on this um ha Definitely, wala tayong um, rule 1 break, no? Na violations. If you look at this, rule 1, wala namang outside of the bounds. So, both the... And you you have to assess this for both, no? Sa X bar, R. Uh, sa X bar, tsaka pati sa R. Okay? So, um, dito, uh, for the X bar, uh, sorry, for the X plot, ah, sorry, nasan ba yun? Uh, for the X, XMR chart, all the four rules apply for the individual X plot. Um, however, para sa MR, only rule one applies, no? Yung sa, uh, this is for the XMR. Pero dito sa X bar, where, where, wait lang, ah. X bar R. Nasaan yung ito. Anyway, uh, let's try to assess no, kung alin yung kung meron ba tayong may nababreak na rule. Um, if you look at it, meron bang rule number two na break? Rule number two is when you have two out of three, no? na at zone A and on one side. So, ito siya. Rule number 2, 2 out of 3 na nasa zone A and on the same side. Rule number 3 is uh, 3, a uh, 4 out of 5, uh, zone B or A, same side ulit. Tapos, rule number 4 is 8 consecutive on the same side. So, definitely, walang 8 consecutive dito, no? Tama? Walang 8 consecutive. So, we, we're good in that. Okay tayo sa rule 4. So, type lang tayo. Rule 1. Uh, okay. Rule 2. Rule 3. And rule... Ah, sorry. Mali to. Uh, type lang natin dito. Lang. So, rule 1. We're okay. Rule 2. Uh, wala, hindi ba natin access na? No? Rule 3. Rule 4. Okay din tayo dito. So, let's look at rule 2. Rule 2 is 2 out of 3 na nasa zone A. Wala tayong makikita on the same zone. No? Ah, nasa zone A. You can notice, eto, may 1 point zone A, may 1 point zone A, pero walang 2 out of 3 nasa zone A. So, okay tayo dito. So, so rule 3 is 4 out of 5. Do. So, dito, zone B and A. Wala naman dito. Eto, wala. Dito din. Zone A or B. Wala naman. So, okay din tayo. So, in this, um, these two charts or itong sa X-bar R chart na to, we can say na in control yung process natin. So, process is in control. Okay? So, pwede ganun yung ano natin. Okay? So, let's uh, try to do, uh, wala na tayong time, no? Pero, um, 
for the other charts, halos same lang siya. But instead of, uh, di ba, yung four, three charts na gagawin natin is X bar R chart. Yung next naman is X bar S chart. No? So si X bar S chart is the same as X bar R chart. Pero this time, instead of using uh, sample ranges, ang gagamitin natin is sample standard deviation. So babagawin lang natin yung S chart na lo. Tapos sa S chart, uh, ang mangyayari is um, yung control limits natin magbabago din. Um, instead of using A2, di ba A2 yung ginamit natin, A2 times R. If you remember, ito. X bar bar A2 times R. Uh, dito sa, ano, sa X bar S, it's A3 times S bar. Yung uh, average na standard deviation. No? So magiging A3 times S siya. Tapos, um, yung sa S chart, instead of using D, di ba D4, D4 and D3 for the upper and lower respectively, ang gagamitin sa S bar is B4 and B3 times S bar. So yun. So kumbaga same lang yung concept, iba lang yung magiging con uh, yung constants, iba lang din yung hinahanap. No? Instead of range, ang hinahanap natin is S bar. So X bar, X bar R and X bar S are fairly similar no? except for instead of range, uh, yung standard deviation yung kinukuha natin. And therefore, mag-iiba din yung mga constants nito. No? Okay. Tapos yung XMR is uh, known as the individual X or XI uh, and the moving range. No? Um, to do XMR charts, meron tayong tinatawag na moving range. No? And the moving range is just um, yung, yung or yung M, MR natin is just equal to yung X value of the uh, yung I plus 1. So that's the uh, next term. Uh, minus the term that you are looking for. So for example, if I look at this, yung April 1 ko na term, will, uh, yung moving R ko sa kanya is equal to yung I plus 1 minus yung, yung first value ko. Okay? So dito, it should be... Wait lang. Bakit wala akong moving R? No, moving our range should be, if I look at this, no, it's 22 minus 19. Mm, mukha may mali sa formula to class, no? Kasi this, if you interpret this, this should be, kunwari, kung kukunin ko yung um, moving range of the April 1, it should be yung... Diba parang sabi niya is the next sequential value minus 1. So that's 22 minus 19 which is 3, no? Pero actually if you look at it, uh, yung moving range niya is the uh, individual value, current individual value niya minus the previous moving range. Kaya wala siyang moving range for the first, no? Kasi 19 minus, wala naman siyang previous. Eh. Okay? So it should be, itong moving range na to, um, uh, I'll, I'll just edit this uh, slide no, para hindi kayo malito. Pero it should be yung moving range is equal to the uh, the x value at that particular date minus the previous uh, sequential value. Okay? So that's moving range. Tapos, uh, same, no? kukunin pa, nyo pa rin yung x bar, x bar bar niya. Tapos, i-calculate nyo yung um, average of the moving ranges. No? So, yung denominator niya is K minus 1 because if you look at it, uh, parang you have 10 observations here. Pero yung, yung 10 observations na to, um, on, you only produce 9, of, uh, nine moving ranges no? because mabaga, yung kulang kasi yung data mo to produce uh, 10 moving ranges. Tama? Kasi it's always uh, x x i minus x i uh, minus 1. Tama. Okay. Then you calculate for the UCL and LCL which has its own uh, formulas. No? So ito, you'll use E2s, D3s, and D4s uh, instead of the A's and B's na ginamit natin for, ano, no? for the x, x bar R and the x bar S na formula. So, same lang siya. And 
you'll still use the same rules, no? So sa XMR, uh, ang difference lang si XMR is all rules apply for the individual X plot, pero sa MR plot, only rule 1 lang yung pwede yung gamitin. Okay? Pero dun sa ano, sa X bar R tsaka X bar S, pwede yung gamitin yung 4 rules dun sa ano, sa both charts. Okay? So ito, if you look at the module, meron naman tayong ano, no? this is from the module. Actually, it's the same na yung ginawa natin. So nandito yung X bar R. Tapos ito yung ano natin, X bar S. Tapos ito yung, hindi, yung XMR, no? With the same na ano. So ito. Notice na ang ginamit niya is absolute. Abs is, means absolute, no? So absolute value. So, so the moving range is an absolute value. Okay, so ito siya, moving ranges, x average, tapos UCLX, tapos nandito na rin yung constants, no? nilagay ko na rin dito sa table of constants. Okay, so that's for SPC. SPC is uh, relatively easy lang siya, no? Ang, ang ano lang is, it can be tedious at times, no? Lalo na pag sinesetup niyo yung graphs, so... Most of the times sa uh, graphs ano no na, nagkakaproblema kasi nahihirapan lalo na yung mga zones nahihirapan na ano no i-set up yung parang mga zones um but it, it it's relatively easy lang yung concept niya no uh, you just have four rules at least in our course no we have four rules we check if there is any violations of those four rules tapos if there are then the process is out of control and um simple lang din yung mga formulas na ginagamit no? so we have x bars we have r bars s bars tapos uh, we'll just use a bunch of constants to to compute for the upper control limits and lower control limits yung siguro ang pinakamahirap lang sa part na to is yung computation of for assessing then the zones no because the zones lalo na if you don't do um the if you you're doing dynamic na uh, zones no so kumbaga kung every new data na dinadagdag nyo kailangan yung i-assess yung or kailangan mag mag-change yung zones then you have to do uh, parang mga horizontal lines and uh, if 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 you allow me no uh, maybe we can extend a little bit no so pwede na tayong gawin actually class if you want so dun sa x uh, we can do zone a b uh, let's say x zone B, C. X. Tapos, copy natin to. You can also create multiple pa pala to. Buko dito. <coughs> this is zone A, B, upper. Upper and zone A, B, lower. So, kaya siya mahirap kasi <clears throat> you have to produce four different lines now. So let's just say I produce this one. So ito say AB kung upper siya equal lang siya actually sa um, ito X bar minus uh, see, we do uh, we do center line minus upper line and this is between A and B no? so dapat two thirds of the way siya. So, times 2 divided by 3. And we add it with the center line. Kasi upper siya. Okay? Parang ganyan. I'll move ko lang downward. So. Okay, so that's my AB. So, si ano naman. I can copy this formula. Tapos, ito, since uh, BC to, then it's just one third, no? Or just divided by 3. Wait lang. Bakit mas mataas siya? It's upper limit minus the center line times 2 thirds. Tama ba? Kasi ito, hmm, mas malito. 
Ah, okay. Baliktad kasi. Upper limit minus lower limit kasi. Ah, ulitin ko kalas ah. It should be upper limit. Kaya pala. Upper limit minus minus the uh, center line. Okay. Now that makes more sense. Tapos ito divided by 3. Let's move natin ito. Tapos, ang gawin nyo lang is mag a lang kayo ng new select data. Add. And we call the zone upper. Ito. Tapos, ito siya. Hindi ko muna i-format nga. No? Pero notice na magla-line up na siya dito. No? So, ito na yung interface ng zone A and zone B. Tapos interface ng zone C, B and C should be add. So, let's call this zone B and C interface. So, you can see, you can now imagine class, no? Kung bakit siya tedious. Kasi you'll have to do this for all of the lines, no? So, if you look at it, ito na naman yung interface between B and C. So, maganda lang dito is because you can do dynamic referencing. No? So, for example, if you do add another point, so pwede magbago na tong values na to based on the new uh, Feb10 data na nilagay nyo. Tama? Okay. Uh, thank you, Russell, for the correction. No? Yung UCL minus center line. Okay? So, yun. Um, again, ito lang yung nagpapatidyos sa kanya, no? yung parang if you really want to make it dynamic, no? which is the goal naman of SPC is you want it to be dynamic. No? You want it to parang ref you want it to reflect, reflect real-time na results, no? whether uh, um, a process is in control or, or out of control on a data point basis. So every new data point should be assessed immediately no? or in the real-time. So, kaya it, it would benefit you if you do dynamic formulas. No? Unless, of course, you can do it. Mare, uh, pag nagdagdag kayo ng new data point, ang gawin nyo na lang is just edit the uh, parang new data based on the uh, additional data point na didagdag nyo. So, pwede naman yun. You can also do that. Pero in, in Motolite before, and I think also, I don't know, you can use, uh, actually, but may mga programs naman na available no, that does SPCs for you. So sila na mag-generate ng mga ano. And if you're good with coding or ma marunong kayo gumawa ng mga programs, actually pa rin yung pwede kayong gumawa ng sarili yung program to produce this SPG charts, no? Pero if you want to use Excel, <coughs> the the best way to do this if you want it to be uh, automatic parang program siya is to do uh, dynamic formulas tapos ano, automatic mag-change na yung ano niya. Yung yung different na lines and values. No? Ito. Yeah. So, yun. Um, this is our final lecture for this sem, no? Meron ba kayong questions? We can, uh, we can actually meet on Friday, no? Para discuss natin yung project, no? Pwede tayong, if you want, we can meet on Friday. Um, let's have a consultation session again. Tapos, um, yung ano pala, yung final project natin, wala na palang paper yun. No? I just reread the syllabus. Uh, wala na tayong final paper, so you don't need to worry about that. Ang kailangan nyo lang is final presentation actually. No? Ang initial na ano, and let me ano lang. Tingnan ko lang yung conversation namin with Sir Terrence. No? Pero ang initial ata is we do it next 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 week. Parang, wait, let me. Uh, next week pala, sorry. We can do it next week na lang yung presentation natin. And I think baka isasabay na lang yung both classes, no? So okay ba yun? Pero most of you, and I think some of the groups already have data, no? And meron na nga naka-analyze. So, ganun, you can also, uh, ano, pero meron bang um, groups na wala pang data? 
yung parts ng presentation, um, ano lang, yung background, yung methodology nyo, yung data nyo, uh, y- yung usual na pinapresento. I can give you siguro a parang outline uh, f- to, for your guide. Pero the outline is just a guide. no Hindi naman kailangan i-follow nyo siya. You can add more if you want. You can um, remove some of the parts if you feel na hindi siya necessary or hindi siya important talking point in with respect to your um, your presentation you can be uh, free dito no pero I'll, I'll give you an outline para um and I'll base this sa mga previous na submissions no so I'll just give you an outline and we can do this live or you can also opt to do a recording no so kumbaga once you present it you present it as a recording lang pero live yung question and answer kumbaga Okay. And uh, uh, uh siguro me and Sir Terence can parang set up a ano no parang guidelines po ano yung parang kailangan uh, yung gawin doon sa presentation. Um okay ba kayo next week or would you rather have it um uh, ano pa in a more advanced date? Ano yung nakikita nyo yung ano? At uh by the way, yung ano mali yung nakasulat sa syllabus no yung Um, exam natin is 11 actually June 11 to June 13 na parang typo lang yun uh, Friday to Monday pa rin siya okay lahat ba ng groups meron ng data nakapag survey na ba yung kailangan mag survey Uh, pag-usapan na lang natin on Friday. So, uh, uh, schedule or same schedule lang gagawin natin sa Friday. Yung same schedule na ginawa ko last time. Yung mag-start tayo at 10. Tapos 10 minutes per group or 15 minutes per group. Okay? Tapos pag hindi kayo po pumunta, ibig sabihin baka uh, medyo fairly okay na yung study nyo, no? Uh, you, you don't need consultations anymore. So it's optional. No? You, you can go to the consultation session pwede rin hindi kayo pumunta sa consultation session. Uh, but let me know ahead of time no? kung, kung hindi kayo pupunta para at least alam ko na hindi ako mag-expect ng yung group nyo na pumunta. Pero if you don't uh, res- um, send me a early notice, I'll assume na parang ano, you, you, you will be going to the consultation session. Okay? So I'll meet you This Friday, 10 a.m. onwards, same na uh, scheduling as before. Okay ba tayo doon? Thumbs up or like? Thank you, Martin, for the feedback. Um, I think okay na siguro. Other questions? Wala na. Mukhang okay na lahat. 